Hey everybody, welcome to Least Cast. I'm your host Matt. I'm Drew. And I'm Tyler. Welcome everybody to the Linux Cast. The boys are back in town. The boys are back together. All three of us in the same, you know, jitsi call for the first time in what seems like weeks. Tyler. The rumors of his demise are have been greatly exaggerated. Also, that's still the fucking creepiest thing ever. <laughs> Tyler discovered the zoom on his camera lens, and now he's known how to use it. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're back. We're going to talk about some Linux hacks tonight. But before we do, uh, we're going to do the same thing we always do, and then we're going to go around the horn and talk about some of the things we've done since we last saw each other on Linux. So, Drew, why don't you take us off? Uh, a couple things are repeats from last week. I've been covering for a hospitalized coworker. He's not doing well, actually, and I, but it's okay. I don't feel like I'm stretched at all. But I have finished the Sway installation script and have been far too lazy to actually merge the test branch to the main. I have added another DWM patch called Focus Adjacent Tag. And that was on a recommendation. And I kind of like the functionality because it allows you to quickly, you know, set a keybind to either go forward or back one tag or move a window to the next or previous tag really quickly. I also put out a video earlier today on Nextcloud bookmarks and a Firefox extension called Flockus. And I mentioned that a couple, three weeks ago on the podcast as my thingy, excuse me, nuggy of the week. And, uh, and I really, really like the, uh, using Nextcloud bookmarks. It's one of my favorite new things. All right. Tell me what Nextcloud bookmarks actually is. I don't know what it is. It's big. I mean, it's like saving your bookmarks to your, your, uh, like Firefox or for you, not Firefox, <laughs> that other thing that nobody, that, that shall not be named, but the ability to share bookmarks is what I find the most appealing thing because I'm using Nextcloud uh, bookmarks. I'm able to share even just one folder with my wife. It did, you know, a simple, it's anniversary ideas, for example. And it's a bunch of bookmarks in that particular folder. And she's able to see the exact same thing and edit that that directory as well so mm. it's pretty it's pretty nice being that's the main thing is being able to share your bookmarks with somebody else so it's not like uh read it later or pocket or something like that. It's more browser bookmarks yeah yeah cool that's awesome all right tyler what about you since we last saw you you do anything interesting well yeah me and jerry were talking about earlier today uh getting uh, getting together and working on some kind of project where since like most of the standalone VR headsets run Android, we want to make a environment where you can run like Linux and kind of have like a vision OS type kind of like productive environment where you can also run Linux on a more powerful, like Android device actually have some kind of functionality there. And we're investigating if we could get the Nix package manager to work on it. And the res like, we're not positive we're going to be able to get it to work, but we found someone else that's been able to get it to work even outside of a Termux like strict environment. So odds are we'll be able to do that, and that should be a really fun and cool project. And I mean, I've just been dealing with a lot of like family stuff and had a vacation that was fun. So it's been all over the place, but it definitely has been a productive past few weeks all right so for me i had a snafu so i i'm using OpenSUSE as everyone knows because i no. i tell everyone okay <laughs> i can't help it it's it's a it, i i have a sticker i have i literally went out i bought a sticker there's something in the rules when you buy a sticker you have to tell everyone that you have a sticker but, but anyways i uh, decided on my next long-term review, it's going to be Bluefin, and I got that all set up on my secondary hard drive here, which is where I usually do my long-term reviews on this computer, and then I'll eventually install it on the laptop behind me. But I got that all installed. I recorded my video, my initial video for that. I logged out of that hard drive and got back into the boot menu, changed the boot order back to where it needed to be, and tried to get back into OpenSUSE, and 
it wouldn't boot. And I was like, what the hell? So basically the error was it was looking for a, a, a UUID, a, a disk partition that was no longer there. Like all my, but all my drives were, you know, still plugged in, nothing had changed. And it turned out it was the swap partition of OpenSUSE. The UUID had changed somehow between me installing Bluefin and then logging back into OpenSUSE on the other hard drive. And it was weird, right? That's like, that's really weird. So, but not an impossible thing to fix. But so, so I figured, you know, I'll just go find out what the new UUID is. Cause I mean, it shouldn't have changed anyways, but I'll go find out what the new one is. I'll, I'll do that in Bluefin, find the UUID and then put it in the FS tab and it should boot. Nay, nay. <laughs> like it, it didn't work. It was still looking for that old UUID. And I'm not sure exactly what ended up happening. Somebody mentioned that it was something to do with Grub. Uh, several people in the Discord tried to help me. I just didn't have the time to troubleshoot it. So what I ended up having to do was do a full reinstall. It's my third reinstall on my two-year challenge. Um, I'm not happy that I had to reinstall because I didn't have a I did not have a current backup because my backup strategy, as we discussed on the lug, is still utter garbage. Like it's still, it's not good. It's it's non-existent actually at this point, which is not a comfort comforting thing at all. But so I got back into Bluefin, did a did a backup, so I didn't actually lose anything, and then reinstalled. So that was not a a fun time. The weird thing is, the U the UUID of that swap partition kept changing. Like, it changed twice more after that, but it kept looking for the old UUID. <laughs> even if the, the FS tab was changed, even if the FS tab was changed, it still looked for the old UUID, which it shouldn't have. Like, it, re it really shouldn't have. And I don't, I don't know. Like, so like I said, someone mentioned that it had something to do with Grub. Uh, Alexi tried to get me to mess around with systemd services. I wasn't, I, I just did not have time last night. I had to have, I had work I had to do, which means I needed to have a computer, uh, and all my stuff to actually do that work. So I had to reinstall. So I didn't have a chance to troubleshoot it, but it was, it's, it's the weirdest thing. So I don't, so there was some talk that it might've been Bluefin. For some reason, Bluefin during the install changed something with that UEID. I don't think that that's the case. I think it's something to do with my boot menu on my computer that changed it. I don't know why, but my boot menu has been broken for well over a year. Um, so I have to actually have to go into the BIOS to change the boot order in order to boot into a different hard drive. I'm wondering if something there fucked around uh, with the UIDs. I don't know what, don't know. It's weird because it never did it with Nix. Like Nix was on that previous hard drive before and it worked fine. Uh, never had never had a problem. Did blue, blue, Bluefin and it, had some issues, so I, I don't know. It was really Sounds weird. Sounds about right. Nick's got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, see, the point is here is that Nick's didn't mess up Open Sousa, which is good, I guess. <laughs> good job, guys. You did. You did good. Uh, you done. You done good. I, I don't know. Again, it was. A, it's. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever come across in Linux because the UUID shouldn't change. Like the only reason, the only thing I've ever seen a. a only thing I've seen change a UUID is when my CMOS battery died and it completely fried everything. And even then, it shouldn't change. Like, they should stay the same. Because that should, some of that stuff should at least be stored somewhere in memory where it's, like, you know, like hard. But it, it's, I don't know. It, it was a weird thing. All right, anyways, so, so that's what I spent my yesterday doing. Instead of actually editing the video that I made yesterday and getting it posted last night like I wanted to... I instead messed around doing that, so I'll end up having to uh, edit that pod or edit that video tonight and upload it tomorrow. So yeah, good times. Should have just used Windows all along, is what they're saying. Oh <laughs> no! Yeah. And if I'd been using Windows, uh, I, I would have been. I I, I would have either been dead or I would have been one of those people who went on murdering, you know, psychopathic spree because I hate Windows that much. And it would have been Redmond. Now, the next time there's something in Redmond, they'll look like, hey, that guy there threatened to do something in Redmond. He's definitely the guy. <laughs> uh, see, like, look, Matt, Matt's genuinely one of those people. He talks all this trash, but he just hasn't tried the latest Windows 11 update. And awesome. once he does, he'll realize <laughs> everything's been fixed. It's perfect. <laughs> My joke was, well, it, you know, there's cameras all over the place. They'll recognize my fat ass somewhere along the line. So if it's the guy who's like half my size, it obviously couldn't have been me. <laughs> all right. Anyways, 
that was our weekend foss. Uh, we had some good times. We had some bad times. Uh, and I don't remember what the rest of the lyrics are, but um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, guys. It's like 830 and it's past my bedtime. I had to get up early to go to a doctor's appointment. So I had been out for a very long time. And anyways. So, our main topic for the week. This was actually Drew's main topic because I, I dropped a bomb on him last week. I was like, Drew, I'm so sick of coming up with the topics. Can you please, for the love of all that's holy, come up with a topic, please? And being the gem that he is, he came up with like 20. <laughs> like, seriously. He was the overachiever in high school, Tyler. And he, like, one of us had to be, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely wasn't me. All right. Anyway, so Drew came up with this topic, and it's the Linux hacks. So because there's no de- good definition of hacks, I uh, kind of you know didn't know what I, what to do there. So I, I came up with a whole bunch of different things. But what I figured we do is we just go around the horn. We'll do one each and rotate around a bit, so we can each talk and we'll discuss. This the is thing. the proverbial nuggy of the episode thing, where we're just going to go nuggy, 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 nuggy all the way around, friends and. This is good. this is the <laughs> this is the extent of this podcast. Yes, it's going to be great. So, Drew, since it was your idea, why don't you go ahead? and I am going to your... steal yours. Then, if you're not going first, Matt, go ahead and go first. No, 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 no. I I won't steal yours. I know the one that you want for sure. <laughs> My first thing is time shift. This is a this is something that is I don't know if it's a hack or not, but basically it's something everyone should be using. Some type of uh, restore utility for Linux and, you know, designed to manage your snapshots. It, you can use rsync or if you are using the ButterFS uh, file system, you can, you, you can do it that way. My most popular video by a mile is the one where I've set up Debian uh, using ButterFS and setting up time shift, you know, basically editing your volume so that you can get time shift working correctly. That's the one I've probably, I've got like, I don't know, well over 50,000 views on the, this one ep, uh, video. And I think people are, have commented many, many times that it's like, thank you for doing that because using time shift, having snapshots is such a big part of my workflow having something that I can go back to uh, and restore from, you know, you can set up time shift and, and you know, you can schedule your time shift um, so that it happens every day or every other day or what have you. It's really, really good. It, most of you probably have either heard of it or are actively using it, but for goodness sake, it's, it's definitely worth your time to look and, and utilize time shift. I think everyone here is, right? I mean, I use Snapper, but yeah, it's oh, time, you're sh- right. time shift right. is great. T- Tyler, why don't you go ahead and do your uh, your first one? My first one would be uh, create scripts to automate tasks, but the like really nice thing is to automate them, like automate tasks for like opening up applications, stuff like that with key binds. Not just creating scripts, because that can be kind of too uh, broad for, you know, someone to just like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to write scripts to automate tasks. Cool. Which ones should I pick? How complicated should I go? Like, start with making stuff like key binds for opening up complicated stuff. Like, if you're going to, you know, I mean, if you're going to work. It, making a 3d object you're probably gonna have blender open something to like texture it with all that stuff why not create a key bind to set up your entire environment for doing that work etc cetera, etc cetera. like those kind of things save you a lot of time and also are fun to do and are also very neat to show off to other people because most likely someone else hasn't thought of that before very nice yeah that's another good one all right so i'm gonna piggyback off from drew's a little bit so he uses time shift i use snapper but either way uh one of the coolest things about butterfs are snapshots so what i've taken to doing is when i first install my system and i get it all set up exactly the way i want it, and i know that it's working it'll reboot it'll log back in but all my applications are installed and everything what i'll do 
is create a permanent snapshot of that moment. Like that exact moment is never going to get deleted. It's just going to stay right there at the top always. And if I need to, I can roll all the way back to the beginning of time of that install. And that's awesome. Unfortunately, I couldn't use that yesterday because I couldn't actually get into the damn system because of the stupid shit piece of crap, whatever. But you know, under normal circumstances, if something goes wrong and or let's just say I started off with uh, KDE and I decided I was going to install GNOME. I was in GNOME for a little while. And what I wanted to do was go all the way back to when I had KDE set up perfectly without any of GNOME's nonsense. I can just go back to that initial install because one of the things that Snapper does is it does it does a and TimeShift will do this, too, is it will do a it will do snapshots every time you install something, every time you do an update. Right. If you set it up that way. And the problem with that is that it does it by date. So if, unless you know exactly what date you needed to go back to, that could be a problem. So if you have this initial one, you can actually name it to the beginning of time and it will you'll know that that's the beginning of time. It's awesome. So that is uh, my first one. Uh, and just to go on a little bit more, ButterFS should be the default file system on Linux. Period. Uh, anyways, uh, Drew, your next one, please. I th want to talk about one. I mean, I tried my darndest to basically restrict it to things outside of the command line, but I am going to use a command line one right now. And that is using the pipe in order to find something in your history. Okay. Like, how I don't know how many times I've gotten to the command line and I'm looking for something in my history that was maybe like 50 entries ago. All right. And I go history and then pipe grep and then whatever I'm looking for, which is let's just say patch or MKV merge. So history pipe grep MKV merge. And it finds that command in my history so that I can then reuse it. And I don't have to go hunting for that command that I used like two weeks ago. You know, I love that. If that, I don't know if that's a hack or not, but I'm going to call it one. I like that. That's good. It is. I use, I use that too. I, on the snapper thing, I never remember the command to create a permanent snapshot. So I just do that exact thing and look for my, my last snapshot. And there it is. There history. you go. Seriously, don't delete your bad history. You never know when you're going to need it, uh, ever. So that's a good one. Uh, Tyler, your next hack. My next one is make use of NFS for, like, if you have one large drive, like, most people don't have a ton of extra storage just laying around. But if you have one extra large drive, make put it on the computer that stays on pretty much all the time and share it between the other computers. It it helps not only give you a centralized place that everyone can easily like they may may need your help, but NFS is actually remarkably simple to like set up on pretty much every system out there. Just amount the NFS drive and your whole family can not only share data but also you doesn't require every single device having a crap load of storage on it. I use that with my, what I call BFD, big F and drive. That one's like 14 <laughs> terabytes or whatever. Like that one is an NFS where all my home like devices can just throw things on. And it's been really, really helpful. Like it's kind of like a much easier airdrop system with your with all of your okay. devices because yeah. your phone your laptop all that stuff can store stuff there and so it's not like you're having to pass a file around like it's really just you can go to a place and get the file if you ever need to it's really nice cool and it's also much easier set up than like somber or something like that oh, i'm just just gonna say fuck yeah. somber. you guys <laughs> have had you always talk bad about some i never have problems i don't know what you guys well say. well like look that's that's the dynamic with samba either it works and you don't have problems or just getting it working is an uphill nightmare all right fair i enough. think where you win drew is that you use the same distro every time 
Like, like all right. yeah. use Debian. I mean, it, you know how to set it up on Debian. You know all the steps to get to work through your firewall. If you're using one, you know all the steps. They never change because it's been Debian for since you started using Linux, right? You just, you're, you're a Debian guy. Unfortunately, the distro hoppers, the, the, the distro hoppers among us, <laughs> I can't talk where the damn, the distro hoppers among us have set up on multiple different distros. And it's not the same on any distro, even though it should be. Like the process should be the same. It's just a freaking uh, system D service that runs off a configuration file. That's all it does, right? But getting it through a firewall, Dealing with like SE Linux if you're on Fedora or App Armor if you're on OpenSUSE, it's just a mess. I I hate Samba with a passion. Uh, um, like I I got that stupid Windows box that I've been editing on, and I had to set up Samba, and it's just so bad. Yeah, like I hate it. I hate I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I bitch about it every time. That's I, I can't help it. It's one of those things. Like somebody brings up Samba, I just have to air my grievances. All right, so I'm going to piggy piggyback off of Zany's this time. He, he talked about NFS. To go along with that, AutoFS goes along great with NFS. Basically, what AutoFS will do is it will mount your shares automatically without having to deal with FS tab. And it, if you set it up correctly, you can make it so that when it, it will only be mounted when you need it to be. So if you CD into those directories or whatever, it'll mount it. And then after a timeout, it'll unmount it so that you don't have to worry about random disconnects or whatever. You don't have to worry about, you know, things changing like your UUID or whatever. And none of that stuff is going to matter because it will connect to it over NFS just like normal, but it'll only mount it when you need to. And it is amazingly good. Like I was shockingly good. And that's just one use for AutoFS. You can also use AutoFS on external drives that are connected to your computer so that it will only spool up and be mounted when you need it to be. Instead of having it spooled up and connected all the time, it's very, very, very good. Um, and it's also very easy to set up. Both NFS and AutoFS, there's a tutorial on learning, learning, learn Linux TV. Uh, Jay did a whole series on it. It was very good, very easy to set up. So definitely to check out. So uh, Drew, your next one. I don't think it's any secret that I am a big tiling window manager kind of guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? What? He looks I've like seen... a gnome guy to me, uh, Tyler. Yeah. I don't know, but like around yeah. the eyes, the yeah. whole... Bite yeah. your freaking tongue, my friend. <laughs> And so I will not say that tiling window managers are the, I don't know, the hack or anything like that. However, um, having virtual desktops or workspaces is using and being able to have like workspaces that are dedicated to specific uh, things in your workflow is a it's, it's awesome being able to like move from one workspace to another, having stuff that's kind of dedicated. It's like, oh, I'm going to be in OBS. I'm going to be on workspace eight or GIMP and you're in workspace seven and so on and so forth. Having that as a, having that part of your workflow, trust me, it's really, really beneficial. I, I, am, I am so glad you brought up Tiling Window Managers because like I only wrote down two because none of the other ones, I would. How does that bring up <laughs> that? How? That's, a, uh, <laughs> that's how? the best thing ever. <laughs> okay. I don't think it will do it for me. No, and like, like me doesn't work. Why? For me. <laughs> Why is it just like, me? I thought that was just discourse, right? Like, I, I know. It was just discourse. This is Jitsi. It shouldn't be doing it. Like, if I do a thumbs up, is it going to do it? No. This is. I hate this. I I hate it too. I want this. <laughs> Come on, man. How you do it? That doesn't work. Fuck. <laughs> I wonder. Well, if, no, I'm not gonna even I'm answer a guess. So, Go for it. I'm so upset. Why does he always get the good ones? <laughs> nah, nothing. How is it just me? What? <laughs> anyway, so but when it comes to Tyler Twitter <laughs> managers, wait, what? Nothing. I was just, it was an aftershock laugh. That's all. <laughs> as soon as you guys were laughing, I, I immediately checked chat. I was like, oh, someone said something good. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, Tyler. Is what Tyler did, Darth said. <laughs> well, I mean, 
this is my celebration here, boys. <laughs> but uh, like, so my my one that I was going to say when it comes to tiling window managers, and this is definitely not to just upset someone out there, rounded borders, okay? It not only makes your system look nice, especially with animations added on top of it, it looks incredible. You should set up your tiling window, window manager to have this. Uh, there are people out there who will say rounded borders are useless, um, you know, waste space, don't look good. These people do not have refined taste, okay? Install rounded borders. Use it. Enjoy it. It's great. Uh, but definitely also set up animations. Like, you should. Make them long. Make them springy. And make them tick somebody else off in a way that makes you so happy. They're great. <laughs> I, I love that because there's probably like five people in chat right now losing their minds about the animations and rounded borders. There's a lot of people who don't like those. <laughs> well, there's d <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Tyler. I didn't listen to a word you had to say because I'm still upset I don't get fancy animations. Um, <laughs> all right. So my next one is alias everything. So if you are a command line guru or you want to be, chances are you're going to be running the same commands literally over and over again. So like I have one where I always have to CD into several different directories over and over again. Like my, my main Git repository, uh, the podcast file repository, the podcast notes, um, literally dozens of these things, right? Add aliases into your Bash RC or your ZSHRC or your Fish, whatever the fuck Fish does. Nobody knows what the fuck is Fish. But, but anyways, you get yourself... You're a great band, man. <laughs> uh, just remind me of a system of a Don song, Don't Eat the Fish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> Off topic again. Anyways, the the if you... Do these things over and over again by having an alias. It just saves you keystrokes over and over again. Like you, you'll save tons of time. And if you build up your file and you take it with you from place to place, distro to distro, or whatever, or reinstall to reinstall, you over a period of time, you'll manage to have a collection of aliases that you use constantly, or some that you literally used once but are still there. You thought they were going to be really useful, but you've never used them since. Uh, you'll be able to go into that file years from now and it'd be kind of a time capsule of things that you thought you were going to be interested in and never actually got to go through and do but there you have aliases for those things like i have one for like a terminal clock that i just never use um it's in there it's, it will remain in there because eventually someday i'll get the tty clock installed and i'll want it again um because you know maybe i'll get into ricing again or something like that or or there's another one that i have for oh here's a good one i use wireguard for my vpn and the I really don't want to have to do WG dash quick and then remember the configuration file that I'm supposed to point WireGuard towards. I don't want to have to do that. So I just have a, uh, an alias for that thing for both up and down. Also an alias for the curl command that I can use to check, make sure I'm connected to the proper location. All that stuff works great. It's just fantastic. So alias everything. That's mine. You know, what's funny is I recently had a video that I had my bash RC. I didn't think it was good. I was kind of a throwaway, frankly, but you know, I mean, you, you commented on it, Matt. And, you know, I expected that kind of response where it's like, Hey, that SSH thing is really cool in your PS one line. And I thought, yeah, that's going to be about the book. Everyone, well, not everyone, I would say a large percentage of people commented more about aliases than anything else that was like the takeaway that i has like wow i guess <laughs> aliases not everybody uses it but everybody should you know if they're using command line yeah well i mean a lot of people just are completely anti-command line which is fine like you can you can do everything you want to on uh, in the gui that you want to but if you're you're interested in doing the command line at all aliases and functions inside of your bash rc should be the, the first thing you learn how to do because it's going to save you just tons of time uh, and it's just something it, it, it delivers your nerd cred because if you have a really cool bash rc with all these aliases you know you can show that off at the next lug and people are going to be very impressed um, just the truth all right drew your next one 
I really like this application. I don't use it near enough, and that's KDE Connect. You know, I've thought about KDE Connect as uh, being able to, you know, integrate my Linux desktop with my mobile device and be able to, like, you know, receive phone notifications and file share and media control and stuff like that, or even just finding your phone by turning on the ringer. That has helped me a couple times where I just like, where is that stinking phone? And I turn the ringer on on my, on my, on my laptop usually, and it rings so that I can go pay find where my phone is and stuff. I really like KDE Connect. I just don't think I use it to the degree it, it can be used. GS Connect, if you're you're needing the GNOME thing, is basically the same thing, but for GNOME. Um, okay. But it, yeah, it is awesome. Uh, it's very, very good. I, too, don't use it, but that's because I'm on iOS, and Apple is um, oh, okay. a bunch of commies, is, what, is basically what we're saying. <laughs> so, But, I mean, uh, there is no coincidence in the fact that Matt had to bring up a GNOME product there for a second. Oh, wow. Tyler? Shots fired. Shots fired. Fired. I liked you better when you weren't on the podcast. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, I'm using KDE right now, by the way. Uh, so there's that. Uh, anyways, Tyler, you asshole. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Your next well, one. Don't worry, guys. He's not normally like this. It's just because he's lonely right now. And Gnome's away from him. Anyway, so my next thing is going to be if you... I, I don't, I really doubt this would be considered a hack, but on a device where you can use both Wi Fi and Ethernet, always use Ethernet. I had a conversation about this a couple of days ago with somebody who did not know that Ethernet was really an option. Like, if you don't, if you can run an Ethernet into your room and it's close enough where no one's going to get on to you and all you lack is just going out and buying the Ethernet cable, do it. M most of the time, your Wi Fi speed is your limitation. I know a, a lot of us think that we have the best Internet out there. And then you plug up over an Ethernet cable on one of your devices and you're like, huh, well, there's the Internet I pay for every month. Please use it. This this seems like a, com a conversation or a hint or hack that is quite obvious, but it's not always. Almost everything has a Wi-Fi device in it, so it's just easy and convenient not to use Ethernet. If you have the option, do it. Um, if you're ever doing like Zoom calls or stuff like that, trust me, you're going to have a better experience overall. <laughs> Someone said Wi-Fi sucks, but it is better. Over, uh, it's better over nothing. True. I Absolutely. think that's why, probably why I've collected all these uh, these switches in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just have a, a, an Ethernet cable fetish. <laughs> You ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, RJ45 jacks. Oh. <laughs> like, give me that that 500 foot uh ethernet that cat six cable that i can like crimp and you know yeah <laughs> you're such a nerd <laughs> i think we all are yeah i know and that wasn't that wasn't a a, a diss that was a compliment i, know, I, know. I, I was Respect. impressed okay <laughs> <laughs> all right my next one, Argus. Right, so this what the funny thing is the thing that I wrote down in the docs is is actually a GNOME extension. <laughs> so there is that, but it's not hmm. just for GNOME. It just happens to be that's what it's called on GNOME. So the, there, there's this phenomenon where you, what are you giggling about over there, <laughs> Drew? Nothing. But no, seriously, just tell us more about GNOME. <laughs> <laughs> we know you want to. Oh, I'm, I'm surrounded by assholes. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the The Spaceballs reference on the bingo card needs to be on there, by the way. It just has to be. Ooh, uh, yes. <laughs> and ludicrous speed. Uh, any, anyways, <laughs> we're not going to get into quoting. Go comb the desert, damn it. Um, sorry. That one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I think, other with the comb. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Damn it. Damn it, Mel Brooks. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there's this phenomenon on on 
Linux, especially on Wayland these days, where you're on your computer, you're doing something, but you're not actually moving the mouse or doing anything on the keyboard. You're, maybe you're watching a video or you're recording a video or you're recording some audio or something like that. And then your computer decides it's going to go to sleep. Now, this isn't a new phenomenon, but when you're in an Xorg, uh, like window manager, they've solved this. Like it just works. Like if you're doing something, it's not going to go to sleep. It it's like fucking magic. But on Wayland, ever since I switched to Wayland, I've had to have this thing. I like on on you, you ha almost certainly have to use Waybar on Hyperland because it has a sway idle thing on there where it will you put a thing and it keeps the screen from going to sleep. On GNOME, it's called Caffeine. On on KDE, there's a little thing in the system tray that you can check to make sure your screen doesn't go to sleep. And this is just so big. <laughs> like like and the number of times I'm sitting here, I'm. I'm staring at the screen because that's usually where I have OBS and, you know, so I can actually look at the camera because you guys noticed that I'm actually looking over here half the time. That's because I'm looking at the guys and not over here where I actually should be. But uh, so I'm, I'm doing this and then all of a sudden the screen goes blank because it's going to sleep and I have and you'll probably see this in videos every once in a while. I hurry the fuck up and wiggle the mouse so the screen comes back on. Happens all the time because I always forget to do this. But there is a setting in almost every desktop environment. Uh, you have to install it on GNOME um, because GNOME sucks. Uh, on a KDE, it comes pre-installed. Uh, if you're using Waybar, it has it usually. There's like a module that you can put up there. Um, and, but anyways, it keeps the screen from going off and you don't have to panic and it's awesome. So definitely do that. It's more important on Wayland for whatever reason than Xorg because it seems like they got... they us Usually if you're playing a YouTube video on Xorg, it just works. So, you know, it's not going to go to sleep. But for whatever reason on Wayland, it doesn't know that. Um, so that's my next one. You guys suck. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, anyways, Drew, your next one. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of towards the end of my, <laughs> of my list, but I wanted, I did want to like talk about when Tyler said something about like automating scripts or automating repetitive tasks. I thought that the real, more real world type of like repetitive task would be like just running your simple update, you know, where you're like saying for, for me as a Debian user, sudo apt update, and then sudo apt upgrade, and then sudo apt rem auto remove, and then sudo apt clean. Like if you could just put that into say one script that just like update that shit, you know, <laughs> update that shit dot sh and then run that. And then you're like, oh, da, 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 and you're done. You know, whereas, you know, with Debian, there's not a whole lot of upgrade, you know, but at the same time, if you can automate that, that's, that's really a, a, a useful kind of like use of automation or scripting, you know? And I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because probably the bet, if you ever wanted to learn how to write a system D script, that's probably, or like, you know, a user service, you're, that's probably the easiest way, like literally that service right there, just running an update and upgrade automatically in the background is probably the easiest one you could write. Like that one won't take a lot of work. And so you could not only automate the task, you, you can also use it to learn something else, like writing your own services and stuff, cron jobs, all that kind of stuff. Like really when it comes to automating your own tasks, use it as a learning opportunity for something else, especially if it's something simple like that. Like, yeah, you know, uh, that's probably the best way to learn. I got another one, but it's Git. You know, your how Git is used is awesome. And how you, if you can use Git for a number of different like backup, like, you know, most people use it for their config files or something like that, but just, you know, keeping your, you know, your automated scripts that we're talking about, for example, Tyler, having access to that in future, like if you just decide, I'm going to wipe this machine and I'm going to start over again. Having access to all that stuff in your Git, uh, GitLab is so much easier than trying to like, okay, I got to connect to the, or, you know, get my <laughs> USB stick where I've saved all this stuff out and just rather than just saying, get the, get that repo back and then you're gold. You know, and also like when it comes to Git, Git is something that is odd where like everyone knows you should learn it and it would be helpful, but it can be very, very scary because you, you don't know 
like well, let, for example, like let's say you've got all of your scripts in a in a Git repo. You're worried, you know, if something goes wrong, like let's say um, you've tried to change branch and you've somehow done something you're not sure what you've done, all like any of that, it can always be extremely worrying because you're like, well, what if I ruin the repo? What if I lose those scripts? Like copy your Git repo. Like you can copy a you can copy the folder of your repo, save it under a different name, then just go to town. Try like Google it, try find different commands, try stuff. It's you're gonna be fine. The like be- you can the always go best back. use of that is with DWM. Like literally do that with DWM every time you're patching, especially if you're dumbass Matt and you're gonna try to get to thirty or forty patches. Every time you do a patch, run a git push on that commit that you know it's working. That way, if you get to the point where you can't get that C code to just work because, you know, there's too many conflicts with other patches, you can delete that repository locally, pull down the one that you know works, and you can carry on. Like, it was almost like git was made for suckless. I mean, (laughs) yes, like it just works so well. Unfortunately... I'm dumb and only do that about 10% of the time. So usually I, I, I get to the like the, the 17th patch or whatever, and I'm like, damn it, I forgot to make this a Git repository. <laughs> and usually that's about the time I get, whoa, 12, 12 hunks have failed. Um, oh, God, I'm going to have to go through and do this again. Yeah, that's 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 problematic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we can kind of tie this back into, we were talking about aliases earlier. Don't be afraid of writing a complex alias. Uh, probably one of the best examples for a complex alias would be one that, you know, not only you know, takes care of a longer command that you're going to run very often, like, um, you know, updating your repo. Like, let's say you normally edit one file. Well, you can alias opening that particular file. Uh, and then also inside of that alias, when it's closed, then uh, give your give yourself a read option for you know determining whether or not you like you want to update and push it and that way you can you can have a command where you edit your repo and then after it you have an option so if you know it's it's working or if it was a simple change you can go ahead and push it up all without having to run multiple commands and it just takes care of it i'm going to take care of the nerd part of it and, and tell everyone that they need to make that a function and not an alias but yeah well, s- same thing. I know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but technically, Tyler, what you're referring to is GNU slash Linux, not Linux, or as I prefer to call it, GNU plus Linux. Fuck off, Matt. Uh, you dumbass. <laughs> All right, Drew, do you have any. Was that your last one? Or do you have more? No, go, keep going. All right, I mean, we'll keep going. Want, all right, all right. Because yeah. I, I have, I was I, first, right? So yeah, yeah. The reason why I asked is because because if you weren't, I was just going to list off all of mine. Um, because I have like five more. <laughs> like, oh. I, just, I just kept coming up with new ones. All right, so Tyler, uh, you did you just went right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. you, you, you go. I don't think Let's I have go with any that. More. All right, uh, I'm still pissed off. I don't get the cool animations. So, <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, so my my next one is uh, real quickly. If you there are, you know, I can't get him to work. <laughs> Anyways, in, in the terminal, there are going to be certain times where you need to copy the contents of a file. Okay. Either to get those things into the browser or whatever. Now you could go into that file and mess around with trying to figure out how to get that into the copy buffer. Like if you're, in, if you're in Vim trying to do that, you have to set up that beforehand or you have to know the proper key bindings or if you're your nano you have to do whatever the hell nano needs you to do in order to copy it to the buffer i don't know because nano sucks um but anyways uh if you're in a situation where you're in the terminal and you need to copy the contents of some file to the copy buffer and then get it somewhere else using a, a tool like wl copy or xclip if you're on xorg uh, it is awesome. You just basically you take you 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 echo you cat out the file and then pipe it into either WL copy if you're on Wayland or Xclip on Xorg, and it will basically put that into the clipboard, and then you can go copy you can go paste it wherever you want. It, I use it probably 
three dozen times a day. Like half of my scripts are just me doing things and piping it into – like I have one for all the podcast descriptions that I do or all the video descriptions. I just run a command and it just basically copies – the contents of a file and puts it in the clipboard and it, it uses WL copy to do that and it's awesome now just a note depending on what distro you're on WL copy may not exist because there's something called Wayland tools uh, maybe it might be might be called WL tools might be called called WL roots tools depending on what distro you're on it's probably going to be part of a package somewhere so you may have to google it on your distro I'm n it is named something different on OpenSUSE. I don't remember what it is. Um, but anyways, WL Copy, XClip if you're on XORG, awesome tools. Drew, you got another one? Uh, I'm going to go with no, but uh, I think you've talked about cron before. Maybe that's something you might have added to your list, but I haven't seen your list. So I honestly don't use cron all that much anymore. I used oh, okay. to all the time, but uh, the only thing I do now is when I'm in Hyperland, I'll set up a cron job to display my uh, subscription count in the bar. That's about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I used to set up a cron job to refresh the open Susa mirrors, but since I disabled Pac-Man, zippers fast. Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Zippers, zip, zippers perfectly fine. It's it's actually slow, but it's not, it's faster if you disable Pac-Man. Anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> Tyler, do you have another one? No. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I I I will float the boat. You're I have a couple, overachieving here in a I have big a couple big more. way. I know. Usually, I'm the slacker. I understand. All right, so I, I have a couple more. So first, categorize everything when you're messing around with your file system use directories as much as possible you'll be happy that you did even if you're the most disorganized sob in the world and you're that dude who decides to put all the icons on the fucking desktop first of all communist second of all stop that shit third of all seriously stop it um but put things in directories as much as possible seriously uh, if you don't also i would like to say if you refuse to use directories or shove everything in one specific directory, oh my God. please, for the love of God, send your screenshots at the email in the description <laughs> below. We would love to see Just them. Matt to troll gets them. Matt's <laughs> fuck off. Uh, all right. So my own mother has approximately 10,000 bookmarks in Chrome. She learned how to create a folder somehow. I didn't teach her how to do it. She created one folder. And she put all of them <laughs> in one folder. I love that woman to death, but that drives me nuts. Okay? It's absolutely fuck. It, it, it got to my OCD, and I was at the point where, Mom, hand me your computer. I'm going to organize your 10,000 bookmarks into folders for you. But I just know that eventually she'll stop organizing if she did it at all. So I just just do your thing. I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Uh, it drives me nuts. So, so – just for example, on mine, I'm, I'm, I'm so stupid that I went through and I categorized every single wallpaper that I have into their own directories. And they're not and not just like these are all the nature ones inside of the nature ones. I have more directories uh, if, if these are mountains, if these are mountains with water, if this is just water, if these are rivers or these are cities, whatever. I have them all in, in individual directories so that I know exactly if I, if I want this wallpaper and it's of this thing, I can go to that and find it very easily. Now, this is why OCD is a bad thing, guys. It doesn't always manifest the way you think it's gonna. That's mine. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, so th that's another one. Uh, another one is if you have the opportunity to host your own search engine, do so. I, I have I started self hosting Cirques, and it is awesome. Like it is so good. I mean, yeah, it's slow and the results aren't great, but there's no good search engines anymore, guys. No, you, you can't argue with me. Like, like they they're all pretty much bad. So well, this is equally there there are no good search engines that are heavily sponsored or biased in some way no there's just no good ones no there's just no good ones like like google's gotten way worse bing was never good start pages just google without the ads duck duck go has always been fucking garbage i mean it's just so bad like, like that company needs to go out of business i'm sorry but it does i'm sure they're fine people working there i don't mean to I'm getting canceled. I know. But anyways, DuckDuckGo is bad. But anyways, Cirques, you can host it in a Docker container, point it towards – you can you can either use it on your own domain using like Nginx or whatever, or you can just go to the, the local IP address. And it is 
astonishingly good in terms of stretch results, but I mean, it, like, because I had really low fucking expectations. They're not great, but they're still better than I thought. But also, just the thought of, I have my own search engine is kind of empowering. It's really cool. Um, and no, I'm not sharing the URL. It's just for me. You bitches can't have it. Um, <laughs> it dude, it was one of the easiest Docker containers. Like, I thought it was going to be really hard, Drew. Like, you know, some of those Docker containers, like, you get, like, oh, you gotta, there's going to be six databases, and you got to make sure that every single one of them has their own individual port, and it, it, the, the, the Docker Compose is, like, 10 miles long. This was easy. There was, like, six lines long of a Docker Compose file, and just point it at the right port. It didn't even, re I think it required one volume. That was it. Very, very easy. If you know anything about Docker, I'm going to do a video on it eventually. It's so good. And the last one, I think this is the one that Drew thought I was going to do first. No, actually it was aliases. Was oh, the oh, one was I it? thought you were going to do first. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good. This one. Cause this is the one that you pointed me towards document okay. everything, uh, literally right. write everything down because it's awesome. Like, like literally I'm obsessed with it. Like, and it's organized. I've made, directories of everything <laughs> i i've noticed your gitlab is significantly different than that yeah it, it's like it, it's there it's like all there i i'm like, like the other day i was i don't even remember what i was doing but i'm like oh i gotta go write this down oh, oh um alexi taught me how to use <laughs> this good. Uh, i was in gnome for reasons okay <laughs> i swear it was a good reason i was making a video okay i, I was thinking i was making a video and something was going funky with uh dash to panel and i needed it needed to you know stop doing the funky thing so i got into discord alexi as he usually does comes and helps me with with my own problems and he taught me how to, to dump using dconf editor the configuration files for that extension and i needed and you know, that was, you know, a little while ago. Actually, it wasn't the other day. But the other day, I needed to know how to do that again. I had that written down in my documentation. I could just go find that. Another thing that I've done is because I had to reinstall OpenSUSE, I have to set up NFS and AutoFS again. And I never remember how to do it. Um, You know, it's not hard, but I never remember because I'm, you know, whatever. Right? I have, I, have, I have it all in a file in my documentation. I just go there. I know it's going to work because I've followed it three or four times now because it's always saving my ass. Seriously, document everything. And that, uh, seriously, Drew, you're always going to get the credit for that because I didn't. It's awesome. It's so good. Damn it. Now, he doesn't get the cool animations either. It's bull. This is bullshit. It's, you know what it, I think it is, Matt? And, and I don't know this for a fact is like when you when you showed up, I made you a moderator. I made myself. My, I was a moderator because I started. The, but then I didn't actually switch. Tyler to moderator, and so, so he's the oh, only oh, one. Only the <laughs> non mods get it. How fucking fair is that? That's terrible. That's I, terrible. I, I, if, if you're not watching the video, you're totally lost right now. But every time he does a thumbs up, it, you know, I wonder if I did it on this one here. Oh, it's actually clipping on the screen. I don't know if it's. I'm yeah, looking it, at the it's YouTube. Not, it's, yeah, thing it's not all the... showing, but still. It, yeah. The, if you have the chance, check out the video version because we have fun on the video too. Sometimes you just have to see what's going on. So the audio listeners, I apologize for all the. Uh, Nate, I'm truly sorry about all the dead space you're gonna have to cut out here. Okay, <laughs> I'm very very sorry. But at least you're using Resolve now, man. At least we can both use Resolve. Anyways, those are all mine. You guys said you're all yours, right? You got all yours done. I had to save one for the nuggie. Of the week. I know we still gotta do a nuggies of the week. Okay, so that is it for the main topic. That was a lot of fun, guys. We, we, sh we should definitely do that m more uh, often, but I think we'd eventually learn <laughs> if we'd run out of things to talk about. Anyways, uh, that means it's time for the Nuggies of the Week. Now, you're wondering, Matt, can we just do a whole bunch of Nuggies? Yes, but we still have to do the end. It's in the fucking contract. Tyler made me sign it. I I I'm thoroughly still pissed off about it. All, all the addendums and things about Gnome and shit in the, in the contract that I had to sign. It's my podcast. Yeah, I had to sign his contract. It's, it was the stupidest thing ever. It was it was it was a unfair takeover or whatever. But anyway, my lo my lawyer was very surprised he signed it, but very happy. <laughs> pro, pro tip: someone shit gives you a contact contract, get a lawyer. Also, make sure you read it beforehand because I didn't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, we call them nuggies because I hate the word. I can't stand it. it makes my teeth grind. It's like moist. <laughs> <laughs> moist <laughs> god damn all right anyways so 
this is the section where we give our tips, tricks, usually their software picks um, of the week. And that's what we're going to do. So, Drew, uh, take us off first. What's your nuggy of the week? So, we were in a the Linux users group this past Thursday. And we talked very briefly about note-taking. And it was a small part of that lug. Anyway, out of the, you know, Josh mentioned something called Quillpad. And I'm going to give Josh full credit for this. He mentioned it, which is basically for Nextcloud Notes. And it's on Android. I don't know if it's on anything other than Android. But anyway, Quillpad was a fork of something called Quill Notes, which is still open source. It looks on my uh, on my um, on my Android phone looks eerily like Google Keep, and I kind of like that. The reason why is because I only well I wouldn't say only ninety percent of the time I use no uh, mobile notes for lists only. I don't actually write a whole bunch of notes in on my phone but I look at lists on my phone. And so in order to get, uh, it's ordered in order to either edit or to create lists in Quillpad, very, very good. And that's, that's my nuggy of the week. Okay. It is on iOS as well. Okay. On Android, Drew, are the settings completely blank? Uh, I don't think so. He has no settings yet. So I'm assuming this is either a very new app or a very abandoned app. Yeah, there's nothing here. Anyways, I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, it looks exactly the same on mine. It makes me wonder if, well, I'm going to have added any notes because I just downloaded it. Um, any, anyways, this is not the time to actually try the Nuggies of the Week. No, now, I know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we need to do a full review right Fascinating now. <laughs> video content. Just three nerds trying out the application that Drew just mentioned. <laughs> All right, uh, Tyler, your Nuggie of the Week, please. All right, my Nuggie of the Week is... He says, Daisy, I'm going to drive to Tennessee and <laughs> fast fetch. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Everyone should be using fast fetch and use images. Okay. You can use images. All right. So, uh, you know, your anime waifus can finally properly speedily load in the terminal with your system information. Every time you load up a terminal. Now, you're not required to put a waifu there. However, you definitely do get cool points if you do. All right. I guess I, I don't do have, it, but okay. I, I guess I don't. I don't have <laughs> cool points then. I guess I just have. The, I just have the open Sousa logo. Come on, guys! You're my friends. Come on! <laughs> I gotta have cool friends. We're significantly older than you, Tyler. We 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 can't use waifu without looking like perverted old dudes okay well <laughs> Just... <laughs> i don't have it either i, I don't have any waifus on my system <laughs> at, at a certain age the whole anime thing on your desktop starts making you look just a little creepy i'm just I'm just a hot take there is there is definitely one guy who is very upset right now at least <laughs> one guy it's like a, like a 50 year old dude and his <laughs> Just like I really liked them, it's great. No, He's like, no, what no, the no, hell are you no, saying, okay, man? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not judging people who you who read anime. No, 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 no. Just the people who use the wallpapers. Okay, half the people who use the wallpapers couldn't name the characters that they're putting on there. They're just choosing it because oh, that girl's kind of hot, you know. Also, they all look. <laughs> I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta stop before I get in trouble. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think we all, should move on at this point. Yeah. All we should say before we move on is just read DT's message in chat. Have a good day. Our D Dubs and I had a conversation like that recently. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, all right, my uh, Nuggy of the Week is actually a proprietary application. I'm sorry, I, I got to get banned from my own podcast, but it is called Reader for iOS. Now, I love Fresh RSS. It's fantastic. Drew, there's another thing that Drew pointed me towards. Basically, I've become an RSS nerd. I, I collect RSS feeds from every blog that I visit. I'll never visit that blog again because I have their RSS feeds. And that's a reason why heck, half of them only give you like part of the article, which I think is just the worst thing ever. But like, anyways, uh, Fresh RSS is great. 
but I don't want to read it on my desktop. Like I, I when I'm here at my desktop, I'm either uh, not working, and which usually means I'm watching cat videos, or <laughs> or I'm you know actually working what I'm supposed to do. I don't want to go read the news on here. I'm much more interested in having it on my phone. And um, Reader for iOS, that's, that's R E E D E R uh, iOS. It's not free. You have to pay for it. It's actually like a, like six or seven bucks or something like that. So there's not even a free version, but it's awesomely designed, works very, very well with fresh RSS. Also, several other services. So if you don't use a fresh RSS, if you use like Feedly or whatever, you can do that. But you can uh, get that in the in, on your on your iOS iOS phone, and it's just amazing. Like I use it probably at least an hour a day, uh, just going through my feeds, catching up on the news. I have a whole I have a whole bunch of uh, subreddits attached to an RSS feed that I have in there, so I can just kind of. I haven't visited Reddit in probably three months now since i set this up i just go through and read the stuff it, it, you know yeah, i don't do the need the same to, thing like yeah. i don't need to see the comments Not or whatever app, but yeah yeah it's it's great um same thing with a lot of like youtube channels i just get the the rss feeds and i don't need to go there anymore i'm i'm, I'm stealing your your youtube revenue i'm sorry but um it's much it's much better than an rss feed anyways that's reader for iss and that guys is the linux cast that's one of the best episodes we've done in a while maybe it's just because we're all together and we had a good time and you guys were on the whole let's troll matt train for whatever reason thanks a lot i appreciate that's that the topic my friend um also also <laughs> I, I think whoever pointed it out in the chat the reason why tyler gets the cool things is because he's using a mac right now like, uh, <laughs> this is true <laughs> like he's not on linux that's why he gets the cool shit okay <laughs> Uh, and, and that came out at the end of the podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the good news is most people don't listen to all the way to the end, so they won't be unsubscribing because like a third of our members use proprietary garbage. So anyways, that is the Linux cast. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. The best way is absolutely the email address. That's email at the linuxcast.org. That comes to my email in my inbox. But if you want to get in contact with Drew or Tyler via email, you can just email me there and I'll forward it on. I did actually forward something to Tyler's Gmail account. I don't think he checks it ever. I, I did actually see that. I just didn't know it. I didn't know if I should respond to it because it was a forwarded email. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and respond to it. If I forward you something, it's because it was for you. Um, I still get an email every once in a while that it needs to go to Josh. So, <laughs> so. Well, I do have that email saved, so I'll respond to it. Okay. Um, but anyways, email at the link org. That's the best way to contact with us. But there are other ways. Tyler does have a YouTube channel. He doesn't know how to use it very often. Every once in a while, he'll remember the password, put up a video, and then he'll just disappear again for six months. It's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, the, the a fucking groundhog. He sees a shadow, goes go, goes away. Winter sticks around for a little while. Actually, I I would say it's probably the best upload schedule there is. <laughs> it keeps you guessing. It, it's very laissez faire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, youtubecom zanyog. Go follow it. He does stuff every once in a while. You also catch his Discord. Those links will be in places. Uh, Drew also has a YouTube channel, which he actually knows how to use. He posts videos there. Um, Debian and and awesome apps and uh, scripting now. And he's just like, he, he does awesome stuff. So that's YouTube.com slash the... Uh, damn it, just a guy Linux. YouTube.com slash just a guy Linux. I went, I had a stroke there for a second. It was, it was dumb. Uh, anyways, go subscribe to him, his channel as well. You can find all the links to all of our stuff at the linuxcast.org slash contact. And that's the website where you'll find all of the previous episodes of this here podcast, all the way back to season one, episode four. The first three episodes, I get an email at least once a month asking me, hey, where are the first three episodes? And I respond back, oh. Oh, uh, I, I do actually have them. They're just so fucking bad. I'm never going to share them. It's not gonna be like it's not gonna be like Bambi. Like you guys remember when like VHSs were a thing, and Bambi would come out and be on sale for a little while, and then Disney would cram that thing back in the vault, and then it would come back out and be expensive again. It's not like that. You guys are never gonna see those first three episodes. Those are bad. All right, anyways, 
That's it for the podcast. Thanks everyone who does support me at Patreon on, on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuscast. You guys are all awesome. Uh, Nate, when he does the editing, is going to put all of your fantastic names here somewhere on our faces or beside our faces or whatever. He's going to do the editing because he's the editor. Um, thank you to Nate for doing the editing because um, this is going to be a doozy. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure we've been going for like an hour and ten minutes, so it's a good one. It could have been two hours. It could have been two hours. Just think of that. Anyways, if you want to join us live, we record this every Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. We have a fantastic time with the people in the chat. Half the time, they're there trolling us. Uh, I'm pretty sure DT was in there tonight, uh, and he was uh, trolling everyone um, because that's what DT does. Um, and also... Everyone, just know, DT is not bald. I've been told. Oh, no, it's scientifically provable he's not bald. Uh, a person who shaves is not bald. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, I, I still don't I, I still don't know. Um, I, I'm still pretty sure he's bald. Um, but I, I, I just know what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's it for this one. We'll see you next week. Bye!